This is how you gain 50 levels in a matter of seconds, and this is how you destroy NPCs without taking any damage. These are some of the craziest hidden tricks that pros abuse that you don't. So this trick is for players that have literally just started the game. Instead of farming NPCs at the first island, the thing you want to do is make your way over to the last fountain island. And then once you get up here, you want to walk over to one of the NPCs, and then you want to glitch them behind a wall, and you just want to pummel them with your melee attack until they've died. And you're going to notice that this gives you a huge amount of levels. And if you do this like two or three times, it literally gives you 50 to 60 levels, which is really insane. But if you're not a new player to the game, then you probably don't want to be doing this because it's not going to give you as many levels as you think. So everybody knows that when you want to awaken a fruit, you have to complete the raid with that specific fruit. But what if I told you that there's a way you can complete the raid with the Buddha fruit and awaken a different fruit? And this trick is really overpowered because everyone knows that the Buddha fruit is the most OP fruit for finishing raids. And the way you do this is you just queue up whatever raid of a fruit that you want to awaken and you complete the first four islands with the Buddha fruit like normal. And once you've done that, you want to open your inventory and eat the fruit that you want to awaken. And once you do this, you use that fruit to finish killing off the last NPC and then you be teleported to the awakening place and you can awaken that fruit what is underneath the Blossom Roots map. This one's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is go to the highest point on the map you can find. I recommend the mansion on the second seat. All you want to do is go into your settings on Roblox and you want to turn your graphics to the lowest they can possibly be. And once you've done that, all you have to do is just jump as high up into the sky as you can and then hold down an ability so you stay frozen midair. And what is actually underneath the Blossom Roots map is the Earth. Does that mean that Blossom Roots is on an alien planet? I mean, it would make sense. You can't really get abilities in real life. But if you want an easier way to do this glitch, I recommend some type of flying fruit like the flame fruit, venom fruit, light fruit, or even love fruit. Okay, so apparently the light fruit is not the fastest fruit in blocks fruits. There's one that's a lot faster. I'm obviously talking about the portal fruit. This fruit used to be known as the door fruit, but it was changed because of copyright reasons. So once you unlock the C ability for this fruit, which is called World War, it lets you literally TP anywhere on the map that you want. You can choose any island or any place and just instantly get teleported there. And a bonus to this is that if you have your friend standing nearby, they can also walk into the portal with you and it will TP them to the place that you went to. This fruit costs 1,900,000 belly or 2,000 robux. And the stock chance it has is only 7%, so it's a pretty rare fruit. But the downside is that it's not really good for many other things. I mean, it's decent at PvP, but the main thing that you want to use it for is just traveling from place to place. So did you know that in Blocks Fruits, there's actually a way to make boats fly? You might be wondering, how the heck do you do this? But it's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is equip the control fruit, then you create a dome with the fruit, and then using its ability, you can just fling your boat into the sky. I mean, it's a pretty cool trick to impress your friends. I mean, it doesn't really have that much practical use, unless you're trying to climb a mountain or something. But overall, it's a pretty decent trick, because if you do fling your boat, you can travel a huge amount of distance in a short amount of time. Okay, so now this is a topic that I mentioned before, sea beast hunting. And sea beast hunting is a really good way to get your hands on a lot of money. A lot of you are wondering, how do you get 1.5 million belly by sea beast hunting? So every single sea beast that you kill in the game gives you from 60,000 belly to 250,000 belly. And these chances double if you have double XP, which increases the maximum you can get to 500,000 belly. And there's actually two different type of sea beast events in the game. There's one where only one sea beast spawns, and there's another one which is a sea beast storm and three sea beast spawn. So when a sea beast storm happens and you kill all the sea beasts and you do all the damage yourself, you will end up getting 1.5 million belly, which is a really insane way to grind money in the game. But it's probably not gonna happen because there's no way some Someone's killing three CBs by themselves, unless you're a pro player. <laughs> This next one is a really easy way to get your hands on a huge amount of cash. When you're in the second sea, head over to the cursed ship, and the cursed ship has a lot of chest spawn locations. And if you make your way over to every single chest and collect each and every one of them, you should get your hands on a huge amount of money. And then once you've collected every chest, you can just server hop and repeat the same thing. And there's a butt ton of chests here, which makes it way better than the upper sky islands farming technique. So this is a pretty easy way to raise your bounty and blocks fruits by a huge amount in a really short amount of time. There's this little hidden island on the first sea, and there's a guy called the mob leader there. So every time you kill the mob leader, he increases your bounty by 3,000. And he literally only takes one minute to respawn. You can basically AFK farm this guy. 
And if you keep killing him over and over every minute as he keeps respawning, that should give you 180,000 higher bounty in literally one hour. Imagine how much you could get if you grind it for one day. So everybody knows that the F ability of the light fruit is one of the fastest ways to travel in the whole game. But unlike the flame and venom fruit, you actually can't turn once you started flying, which is something that makes the light fruit pretty bad. So if you started flying and you're off course by a bit, you have to completely stop the ability, wait for it to recharge, and then start flying again. But there's a pretty easy fix to this. All you have to do is awaken your light fruit by doing the light raid. And once you awaken this ability, it lets you turn mid-flight. And it makes a really nice bounce sound when you turn, just like when you hit a wall when you're normally flying. But if you want to stick to speed, you should probably be going for the portal fruit. So everybody knows that Shark Nine Karate and God Human are the two best fighting styles in the game. But which one is actually better? If you're trying to grind and reach max level, Shark Nine Karate definitely is better at this. Because if you notice when you use the abilities, the Shark Nine Karate doesn't have a delay between its third attack but God Human does, and that is one big downside to grinding. But when it comes to PvP, God Human definitely takes the lead in this. All of God Human's abilities are completely focused towards stunning and dishing out huge amounts of damage to your opponent. I would mainly use God Human for bounty hunting and just collecting belly, and I would use Sharkman Karate to just grind levels. And keep in mind, God Human is literally the hardest fighting style to get in the game, so most of you watching probably just want to go for a Sharkman Karate. So this is a pretty easy trick to farm some hockey. So the first step is you have to make sure that you have an elemental fruit equipped it. Then you have to equip the worst sword you can find. And then go to any enemy that you find which does not have hockey. And then stand on their spawn point and have the bad sword equipped it and just leave an auto clicker on overnight. And what happens now is that the enemy because they don't have hockey, they can't hit you. So you're just constantly hitting them and killing them but they don't do any damage to you. And the reason you want to have the bad sword equipped it is because the way your hockey levels up is not by the amount of damage you do to a player. It's the amount of times that you hit them. So if you have a really good sword equipped it, then you're going to kill the NPC faster and then you have to wait for it to respawn. But if you have a bad sword equipped it, you hit them way more times than you would hit them with a good sword. So using this trick, you can max out your hockey in literally one day. So this trick is for the players out there that have their defense stat really low. Did you know that in blocks fruits, NPCs actually cannot hit you through walls, but you can hit them through walls. So if you find an enemy that's super overpowered and they would literally one shot you even if they hit you once, all you have to do is you lure them behind the wall and then you stand on the other side and then you walk up to the wall and you can just start hitting them through it. And they can't do anything. I mean, they'll try to hit you, but they won't do any damage. And apparently NPCs and blocks foods don't know how to press space bars, so you don't have to worry about them coming after you. So did you know that there's a pretty easy way in this game to just get a free 200 fragments? So all you have to do is be on the third sea, head over to Hydra Island, and go to the arena trainer. And then if you get the training dummy quest, and then you kill him, you just get 200 fragments and 22,000 belly. And the weapon that the training dummy uses is the dark blade. I know what you're thinking, oh my god bro, it's the dark blade. But the training dummy can't actually use the abilities of the dark blade, it can only use the passive ability. And his level is only 1,500, so he should be really easy to kill. But keep in mind that you can only only equip this quest every hour, so it's probably not the best method in the game. But nevertheless, a pretty easy way to get 200 fragments. If you're wondering how to maximize your potential for leveling up, the race you probably want to get for that is Ghoul. And the reason for this is that most of the Ghoul's abilities are all targeted at leveling up with the Buddha fruit. But keep in mind, this is only if you have the Buddha fruit, and if you don't, you probably want to go for a different race. So for the version 1 of the Ghoul, it's pretty basic. You run 30% faster during night. And for version 2, every time you hit a player using a combat style, it heals you 25% of the damage that you've done to the other player. But this is really good for Buddha users because even when you take that little bit of extra damage, you can instantly heal back up. And once you get version 3 of the race, you unlock an ability called Heightened Senses. And this allows you to use abilities that are still 40% on cooldown. And it gives you buffs such as increases your overall damage by 10%, your speed by 10%, and your defense by 15%. So out of every race in the game, you probably want to keep your eye out on this one if you want to level up as fast as possible. So in the latest update of Blocks Fruits, they actually added a new NPC to the Arctic Cave. And this NPC is the Aura Expert. And you first see players might be wondering, what is the Aura Expert? And there's really good reason for this, because there's no point having an Aura's Expert if you can't actually buy any Auras to use. The person that you buy Auras from doesn't actually spawn in the first C. He only spawns in the second and third one. So it's kind of useless to have an Aura's Expert in the first C, when first C players can't even equip anything from him. But I guess it's kind of useful for second and third C players that are just chilling out in the first C. Okay, so this is another 
another pretty cool trick to get yourself your own free private server. And the way you do this is that once you head over to Blocks Fruits, head into the server section. You click on where it says descending and you change it to ascending. And you can see that it'll show up with a bunch of servers that only have one player in them. And once you join the server, you basically have a private server to yourselves. Because players that join Blocks Fruits are more likely to be put into a full server than a completely empty one. And if the player that's in the server leaves, it literally makes it so that you're the only player in that lobby. And you can invite your friends and you guys can just have a good time grinding in peace. Because if you grind in public servers, there's a good chance that some annoying player is just gonna try and kill you over and over again. Okay, so everyone knows that water is literally the deadliest enemy in the whole of Blocks Fruits. And the reason for this is that most players have a Blocks Fruit equipped in. And if you have a Blocks Fruit and you fall into water, you're pretty much dead. But there are some ways to actually survive water. The most obvious one is the Ice Fruit. Having the Ice Fruit literally just lets you walk on water so you can never die to it. And the same thing applies for Awakened Magma and Dough. With the Dough Fruit, your donut can just roll on water if it's Awakened, and for Magma, you can just walk on water. But did you know that there's a way for players that have any fruit to do this as well? So if you somehow happen to land on water, all you have to do is just hold spacebar. Not click it, not spam it, just leave your thumb on it. And what this does is it lets you just keep jumping on top of water, and you'll never drown. And you can move a bit as well with it, just make sure you don't start spamming your dashes, because then you'll start taking a bit of damage. But overall, this is a really good trick, and I think every player in the game should be abusing this mechanic. So everybody knows that when fighting against player, observation hockey is literally one of the most annoying things to fight against. And there's actually a pretty easy counter to this. There are a whole bunch of abilities in the game that are not affected by observation hockey. These are just some of them. And usually what players do is that they use one of these abilities first, and this turns off the other player's observation, and they can't activate it for a certain amount of time. And what a lot of people do is have a gun to use that ability, because guns are useless and nobody uses them, so you might as well get one, upgrade it enough to have an observation blocking attack. So what you want to do once you have that type of gun is use it at the start, and then you can spam all of your other abilities without worrying about them having to dodge it. I'm going to be giving you guys some tricks for every sword in Blocks Fruits. And I'm also going to be telling you about some secret swords that you might have not known existed in the game. And starting off, we have the Katana. The Katana is sold for a thousand on the Pirate Starter Island. And it can be bought from the sword dealer. And this sword is really basic. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It's not that good for combos. And it has two abilities, Quiet Rush and Air Slash. And they do exactly what they sound like. A good thing about this sword is that it's really decent for starters. And you definitely want to buy this if you want to advance in the game. But keep in mind it's only good at the start and you want to change to a different sword as soon as possible. And next up is a Cutlass and this is another sword that beginners use similar to the Katana. You buy it from the exact same place and it also costs a thousand berry. The sword is basically the same as the Katana. It's good for starters but you want to get rid of it as soon as possible. Now this is a sword called the Dual Katana but 2 times 0 equals 0. You can buy this sword for 12,000 at the Pirate Village in the first sea. And the sword is also a pretty good sword for beginners but only beginners keep that in mind. It's good for grinding in the pirate village, but once you reach the snow island, you definitely want to switch to a different sword. This is the first uncommon sword that you can get your hands on. It's called the Iron Mace. This can also be bought in the pirate village, and it costs 25,000 belly. The Z move has really decent knockback, making it pretty easy to area farm when you start off. But all of the mace's abilities are close range, so if you're trying to hit people from far away, it's probably not going to be that effective. Now we have the Shark Sword. It has a 10% chance of dropping after you defeat the Saw Boss, which spawns for 15 minutes at Middletown, but it only spawns every 1 hour, so keep that in mind when you try to farm this. Overall, the sword is decent, but it's not something you want to waste your time getting, because if you grind enough in the first seed, there's other swords that are way more worth your time. And now we have the triple katana and you're gonna want to buy this sword as soon as you reach the frozen village it costs 60,000. it's gonna help you with leveling up tremendously it is pretty cheap good for beginners decently quick and the master requirements are really low but both abilities from the sword are short range so it's not that ideal for pvp unless the player is standing right in front of you and next up on the list we just have pipe it can also be bought from the sword dealer of the east but this one costs a hundred thousand belly and one of its abilities called earth smash it makes it really decent for grinding because it does a ton of area damage. But a bad thing about that is that you cannot use Earth Smash if you're midair. And overall, the sword's abilities are really close range, so if you're fighting someone far away, you're gonna have a hard time. Next up on the list, we got a first rare sword. It's the Warden Sword. And the 
way you get it is by killing the chief warden and he has a 5 to 10 percent chance of dropping it and this sword also looks really cool because of how big it is good things about this sword is that it has a really low mastery requirement for its abilities and the moves are really fast and all moves also have an area of effect making it really decent for grinding but both of its skills also do have knockback so it's going to send your enemies flying uncontrollably and keep in mind that the damage is also pretty low so it's not that ideal and you probably just want to stick to a different sword on this list okay so now we have the dual headed blade and this sword is a rare sword and can be bought from the master swords dealer which is located at sky islands in the first sea and it costs 400,000 belly some good things about this sword is that it deals a decent amount of damage for how much it's worth and its moves don't have a delay between the third attack which is pretty good it makes it pretty decent for grinding and this sword is something i recommend you guys use when you farm with an elemental fruit but one bad thing about it is all its abilities don't have a single stun move that means you're probably not going to use this much in combos but overall it's still a pretty decent sword for how much it's worth so next up is the soul cane and this is a pretty sick sword that you can buy from a hidden place at the magma island it costs a total of 750,000 belly and it also looks like a cane obviously some good things about this sword is that it has really good combo potential and the soul beam stuns for a really long time it's good for farming because both abilities of the sword have an area of damage effect which means they attack more than one enemy but one bad thing about it is that it has really short range meaning that you can't hit targets that are really far away Okay, so now we have the Bissinito. This is a legendary sword. A pretty cool thing about this sword is it can use one of the Quake Fruits abilities. And the way you get it is you buy it from the Master Sword Dealer located on Skylands for 1 million belly. But keep in mind you need to be at least level 250 to buy it. A good thing about this sword is that its Z ability has decent range and you can fight people close to medium range. And this is also pretty good for grinding because it hits multiple targets at once and it has high damage. But a bad thing about it is that the abilities take forever to recharge so it's gonna be ages before you can use them again but the good amount of damage that it does makes up for it okay so moving on we have the trident the trident is a rare sword that you can get by killing fishman lord in the underwater city on the first scene but the trident only has a 10 percent chance of dropping making it pretty difficult to get a really cool thing about this sword is that one of its abilities literally lets you become spider-man similar to the string fruit you can just grapple onto a place and you can swing there in a matter of seconds you can also use this to fight against enemies but it's really hard to aim so it's probably not the best choice and other than this one the sword doesn't really have any long range attacks making it pretty hard to use one of its abilities called water pulse deals damage to every single enemy surrounding its area but this is literally only in a space of like one meter it's not going to be that useful unless you have a bunch of people grouped up on you for the next sword um actually this is more like a pole the way you get it is by defeating the thunder god that's in upper sky islands in the first sea and the pole only has a five percent chance of dropping so it's pretty difficult to to get. The thing about this sword is that it has some pretty mediocre stuns, but it also has decent damage to make up for that. And something else is that all rubber users are completely immune to the sword's damage because the sword is completely lightning based and rubber fruit users take no damage from any lightning based attacks. The explosive cloud ability from this sword is also really easy to dodge. I mean, you could literally use like two dashes to escape it. And the mouse one attacks from the sword are also really slow. So this sword overall is not that good of a choice. Okay, so now we have a legendary sword sword called Saber. The Saber sword is one of the best swords in the game for PvP and the reason for this is that you can upgrade it to its V2 version which makes it extremely overpowered and the way that you get this sword is by completing the jungle quest which requires you to press all of these different buttons and talk to a bunch of people to complete the quest and once you've done that you have to fight the Saber expert which is underneath the blocks for gacha and once you defeat him you have a hundred percent chance of getting the sword and the way to upgrade it to its V2 form is you need to have a 1 million bounty or honor and you have to kill another player with the sword which has the same level of bounty as you and like i mentioned before this is the best sword in the game for pvp which means the damage it dishes out is huge and it's also pretty decent for grinding but there are better swords and both the abilities of the swords are pretty hard to dodge especially if you're standing really close to the person a bad thing about this sword is that none of the moves of this sword break observation which means it's not going to be that useful for combos you have to get a different observation breaking ability first now we have the saudi sword and this sword is a legendary sword that can be bought from the legendary sword dealer who spawns in for 15 minutes in random locations throughout the second sea but keep in mind that he only spawns in every four to five hours so it's gonna be pretty hard to find him and the sword itself costs two million belly so that kind of money is gonna be pretty hard to get your hands on and this sword is overall a really good sword it has good damage hitboxes combos and 
decent for farming. But a bad thing about it is that it has pretty mediocre range. And one of its abilities called Sword Dance, it's pretty hard to aim for someone and you can't change direction once you've started moving, making it pretty hard to use. Now we have the Wando Sword and this one is also a legendary sword that can be bought from the legendary sword dealer. And this sword is also pretty similar to the one before and it costs 2 million belly. But this sword specializes way more in PvP than the other one. It has really high damage and one of its abilities stuns the user repeatedly slashing them a huge amount of times. And its scattershot ability is really good for combos. But keep in mind that this is still a second C sword so compared to the third C swords it's basically terrible. Now we have the Shisui sword which in my opinion is one of the best swords in the second C and this is also a sword that can be bought for 2 million belly from the legendary sword dealer. And the Shisui sword has really good range. Insane combo potential. But a bad thing about this is it also does not break observation. So if you want to do a combo with the sword you need a different ability to do it for you. But overall this sword is really overpowered and the abilities from it look really cool. So now we have the true triple katana and basically what this sword is is a combination of all three swords from before. And to get this you need all of them. And then you need a 300 mastery on all of the swords mentioned before. Once you've done that travel to the green zone and go to the highest stem that you can find. Then you'll see a guy called the mysterious man and then you can purchase that sword for 2 million belly but keep in mind since you need 3 other swords it basically costs 8 million belly and this sword has a lot of pros. The mouse one speed is above average and this is a really good sword for raids and all of its abilities are really good for combos and dishing out high amounts of damage and this sword is also one of the best in the game for grinding and this sword has the highest damage per click out of every sword in the whole game. The bad thing about this sword is that one of its abilities wolf fang is pretty easy to evade and its dragon hurricane ability is probably not the best for grinding but it doesn't matter too much since the sword's passive ability is really overpowered. Okay now we have the long sword and the long sword is a rare sword that you can get after killing the diamond boss but it only has a 10% chance of dropping. The sword has pretty high combo potential but not that great compared to some other swords on this list and it's decent for farming because its passive ability is an area of effect move. A pretty bad thing about this sword is that it has really low damage compared to other rare swords in the game and it's probably not worth the amount of time it takes to get it since you need to kill the diamond boss at least 10 times for it to drop. Okay so now we have the gravity cane and this is a rare sword that can be obtained with a 5 to 10% chance after defeating Fajita who is the boss of the green zone in the second scene. All of its attacks are gravity based and it has really good damage, decent knockback and it has really low mastery requirements but it's pretty hard to obtain since you need to kill this boss like a lot of times to get it and its X move with the meteors is really hard to aim and if you actually want to hit a player with this you need a lot of skill but the sword is more focused on pvp and if you want to grind it's not that optimal okay so now we have jitte and it can be obtained with a 10 percent chance after defeating the smoke admiral who's at the hot and cold area in the second scene and trust me when i say this the only thing that this sword is good for is mobility the damage that this sword pours out is really bad compared to other swords its level okay finally we have another legendary sword i'm talking about coco and this sword is really crazy for pvp and something really special about this sword is that it can be buffed if you use the control fruit and the way you get this is by killing order and it has a mere 10 percent chance of dropping but in my opinion this is definitely worth it one of its abilities breaks the observation ability which makes it really good and it also has decent damage a bad thing about this sword is that it has really high mastery requirements which means you have to do a lot of grinding before you can use the full potential of this sword and now we have the midnight blade and in my opinion this sword is definitely the best looking sword so far. I mean, just look at it. It looks amazing. And the way you obtain this sword is buying it from L Admin, who's located on the cursed ship in the second sea. And it only costs 100 ectoplasm. So by the time you're done with your quests on the ship, it should be pretty easy to get. And one of its abilities literally opens a portal, which makes it even cooler. This sword has decent combo potential and does a decent amount of damage for the price it costs. And you probably only want to be using this sword at close range because its long range potential isn't really that good. And it also has really high mastery requirements, so you're gonna have to do a bit of grinding. Now we have the Ren Goku sword, and this sword is one of the longest swords in the game. I mean, literally, look how big it is. And the way you get it is, after defeating the boss at the Ice Castle, you have a chance of getting a hidden key. And once you get that, you can open up a secret room. And then once you click on the chest, it should give you the sword. This sword has really good knockback, making it a really good sword for PvP. And its burning slash ability also breaks observation. And its abilities also have good travel distance. One bad thing is that to obtain it, the hidden key from the boss is pretty hard to get, so you're gonna have to kill the boss a bunch of times to get it. 
Now we have the second form of the pole sword from before, and it can be purchased for 5,000 fragments from the Thunder God after completing a rumble raid. Keep in mind you have to have the fully awakened rumble fruit with the 250 mastery on it to get this, and the pole sword needs to have 180 mastery requirement. It's going to take a lot of work to get this. This sword has high stun and damage potential, and something special about this is that it can hit rubber users unlike other lightning based attacks in the game. Bad thing about this, to get this sword since you need to to fully awaken the rumble fruit that costs 19,500 fragments so it's really expensive even though this sword is really good in my opinion it's not worth the amount of time and money it takes to buy it okay so now we have the dragon trident and this trident definitely looks better than the one from before and the way you get this is by defeating the tide keeper and he has a 5 to 10 percent chance of dropping it and since he's the hardest boss in the second he's going to be pretty difficult to kill and the passive ability from this sword is why it's pretty decent it deals a huge amount of damage. And one of its abilities, Sea Dragon Fury, is really easy to hit your targets with. And the Water Dragon Prison stuns your enemies. And the hitbox for this sword is really huge compared to the other swords. Bad thing about this is that it has really high mastery requirements. And its Sea Dragon Fury attacks only breaks observation if you aim it perfectly. But overall, other swords on this list are definitely more worth it since the mastery requirements for this one are really high. Now we have the Yama Sword, and the way you get this sword is you must have at least a total of 20 Elite Hunter or Player Hunter quests that have to be finished. And once you've done that, you have to go into the secret temple located on Hydra Island, and behind the waterfall is where Yama is located. All you do is you simply pick it up by clicking on the sword four times. Good thing about this sword is that both its abilities have really good mobility, and the X ability has a good stun, making this sword overall really decent for combos. One bad thing about it though is it's really difficult to get since you need to do a bunch bunch of quests to get it. Now we have the Toshida sword and this sword is really similar to the Yama sword. I mean they almost look identical. But this sword has really fast attacks with high damage making it one of the best swords in the game for PvP and raids. But the quest process to get this sword is really long and I don't think it's worth it. But nevertheless the sword has really good damage, good movement, good combo potential and pretty easy to hit the attacks even without a stun. And now we have a pretty funny sword. It's called the Dark Dagger and the Dark Dagger is a legendary sword and you you can get it from defeating Rip Indra, the level 5000 raid boss, but it only has a 2.5% chance of dropping. Despite how this sword looks, it's actually a pretty decent sword. It has really good combo potential, it has a low click cooldown, and the sword is almost impossible to Kentrick, making it really good for combos. But obviously the biggest downside is that, bro, it has a 2.5% chance of being dropped from the literal hardest boss in the game, so good luck getting this one. So the next sword on this list is the Canvader, and this is a legendary sword that has a 5% chance of dropping after defeating a beautiful pirate. And the way you get there is through a pair of doors located on the floating turtle island. Good things about this sword is that it's really good in PvP and it's really easy to aim with and you can use other moves when you're using its piercing dash ability. But keep in mind that they do not break observation, they just drain it faster. And this sword is only good for PvP which makes it a pretty bad sword for grinding so if you want to reach max level this is definitely not the sword to be going for. <laughs> now we have an uncommon sword and the sword is called twin hooks and the way you get this sword is by defeating captain elephant who's located at the floating turtle on the third sea good things about this sword is that it has pretty decent damage and a large hitbox and its attacking speed is really fast but its skills have really low range and none of its abilities break observation and one of its abilities is really difficult to land so overall this sword is probably not something you want to go for unless you're a farmer of course and now we have another mythical sword it's called the halo scythe and this sword is literally on par with fighting styles like superhuman and godhuman. Despite its mythical status, it's a pretty decent sword that has good combo potential and damage. However, when you pair it with the butter fruit, it becomes really good for grinding because of its low click cooldown. The best thing about this sword is that its mouse ones are really fast and the cooldown is almost nothing. And its abilities have no casting times, which makes them really useful. So one of its abilities called Death Cyclo knocks the enemy back really far. So this ability is basically useless when it it comes to grinding. It's better to just utilize your mouse one. And it also has really high mastery requirements. And did I mention the drop chance is literally just 1 to 5%? And one of the requirements for this sword is Halo Essence, and even that is considered a legend.
legendary item from the random surprises. So overall, this sword is really difficult to get, but if you do get it, then you're pretty lucky. Now we have a legendary sword called the Buddy Sword, and this sword literally has a face on it. The way you get this sword is by defeating the Cake Queen, and it has a 5% chance of spawning. And the place that the Cake Queen is located is Ice Cream Land in the third sea. This sword has really fast clicks for its melee attacks, the moves are all really fast, making them hard to dodge, and the Lightning Wave ability has really long range. A bad thing about it though is that the Heat Slash ability is only single target, so if there's a group of enemies in front of you, it only hits one of them. And the sword is definitely not recommended for farming, there are definitely way better options out there. And even for PvP, it's kinda mid, making other swords on this list a lot better. Okay, so now we have another trident, this one's called the Spiky Trident, and this sword is known for its huge combo potential and overall damage. And the way you get this sword is by defeating the Cake Prince or the Doe King, but I recommend the Cake Prince because he's much easier to kill. But you only have a 5% obtainment chance from the Cake Prince, meanwhile the Doe King gives you a 15% chance. Both its moves are really good for traveling, which makes them pretty fun to use. And it also has decent damage, but this sword definitely specializes in boss grinding because it's much better for a 1v1 situation. And both moves are single targets, which makes it pretty bad for grouped up NPC grinding. And also has a pretty slow M1 speed. And none of its abilities break observations, so you probably don't want to use this for combos as much. Now we have another mythical on this list, the Cursed Duel Katana. And this, in my opinion, is probably one of the best swords in the game when it comes to PvP. And the way you get it is that you must have a 350 master in both Yama and Tushida. And then you have to complete the Cursed Duel Katana puzzle. And keep in mind, to begin the puzzle, you need to be at least level 2200. So the requirements for this already are really drastic. And to use both of the abilities of the sword, you need a 375 mastery. But if you do end up getting this, it's definitely worth it. The abilities do a really high amount of damage, their effects look really cool, and they're pretty decent for combos. But a bad thing about this sword is that both moves go in a straight line, and they do not break observation. And since this sword has a lot of effects, your ping is gonna spike really high if you don't have a good computer or internet. Finally, we have the Dark Blade, but keep in mind that this is not the best sword in the game, just wait till you see what's next. The Dark Blade is the only sword in the game that you can actually buy for Robux. I mean, you can buy it as soon as you spawn it, and that's exactly what I did. It costs 1,200 Robux, and it's really good for beginners if you want to level up. And keep in mind, if you're kind of rich on Robux, you can also gift it to your friends. And the way to get it is by getting the Brazil Cube that can be summoned by Rip Indra, and then you defeat Mihawk. And once you defeat him, there's a really small percent chance that you get it. Good thing about this sword is that its X ability has a really long range, and the Z move can break instinct. I mean, it's literally called a thousand slashes. It just locks you and repeatedly hits you, and you can't do anything about it, making this sword have really good combo potential. But it's really hard to auto-click with the sword since its third ability literally makes you dash forward. But a pretty decent thing about that is that that third ability does way more damage. And now, last of all, we have the triple dark blade, and this sword just looks crazy, and it's the most overpowered sword in the game. But too bad, the only way you can get the sword is if you're an admin or at least really good friends with one. And the sword is exactly how it sounds, it's literally three dark blades. And you remember the X ability from the dark blade? Well, this sword literally does that same ability, but three times more powerful, literally. It sends out three big slashes. And same with the 1000 slices, if you hold the button, it dashes forward, cutting your NPC a several amount of times. And not much else is known about the sword, because it's really hard to get your hands on. Okay, so one really important thing you can start doing when you get into the second seat is fruit raid. And fruit raids basically just let you awaken your fruit. And when your fruit gets awakened, the moves on it get so much better and way more powerful. Take the magma fruit, for example. Look at the abilities normally, but when you awaken them, you can do all of this cool stuff and you can even walk on water. So the way you do raids to awaken your fruit is you head over to this cold island over here. You walk into this lab and you enter this code. Then when you look over here to the left, there's a little secret entrance that opens opens up, and if you walk into it and then climb up the ladder, you can start doing raids with the raid scientist. And for every raid you do, you need a raid microchip. The way you can get this microchip is buy it from the scientist for a hundred thousand belly, but you can only do this every two hours. Another way to get the microchip is to trade in a fruit. All you have to do is unstore the fruit from your inventory and then click on the buy slash trade button. But you probably only want to be doing this with really bad fruit since you don't really want to trade like a dough fruit just to start one raid. And once you have your microchip, you walk into this little capsule over over here and then you click on this button and then there should be a total of five islands that spawn with a big boss at the fifth island and the boss is really powerful the 
theme and difficulty of the raid depends on what type of raid you There's a lot of raids in the game. You can get into even better ones later when you unlock the third C. But, for example, if you want to awaken your flame fruit, you're gonna choose a flame raid. And one really important thing about this game is that you have to complete the raid with the flame fruit to actually be able to awaken it. Like, if you complete a flame raid with a Buddha, then you won't have potential to awaken your flame fruit. So once you're done completing the raid with your flame fruit, you get teleported to a place with a guy called the Awakenings Expert. And here you can awaken each move individually so it's pretty bad that you can't awaken all of it at the same time but that means you have to do five raids to fully awaken your fruit and also cost a buttload of fragments because you need to pay a decent amount for each time you awaken one move and the amount of fragments you need to pay depends on the ability and depends on the fruit worse fruits usually have less fragment payment so you probably only want to focus on awakening the best fruits you have you can get in the second C that not all players know about and this fighting style is one of the best in the game for PvP. I'm obviously talking about superhuman. And to get superhuman, these are the requirements. You need to have 3 million bellies sitting around, obviously access to the second seed, and a 300 mastery on electric, dark step, water kung fu, and dragon's breath. Many of you don't know about dragon's breath, but it's a fighting style that you can get once you reach the second seed, and you just buy it on this bridge over here. And once you have all of these requirements, you can head over to the snowy island over here. In this secret location, there's a guy called a martial arts teacher, and then you can simply buy it for 3 million belly and the reason this is really good is not only because it's one of the best in the game because you can upgrade it into the best fighting style in the game god human but you can only do that later once you hit the third C. keep in mind that this fighting style is really good only for bounty hunting so if you want to stick to grinding then you should probably just go with shark man karate so next up we have an accessory called the ghoul mask and the ghoul mask is a must-have accessory once you get into the second C. and the reason for this is that it's really cheap to buy and the benefits it gives you are more than worth Worth it. It's really good for people that want to grind with the Buddha fruit. And the place that you buy it is on the cursed ship, and it only costs 50 ectoplasm. Ectoplasm is something that you get from killing NPCs on the cursed ship. And once your quests reach the cursed ship, it should be really easy to get your hands on 50 of it. And the reason it's really good is that because every time you do damage to a player, you heal back 10% of it. And against NPCs, it's 2.5, which is also really good. And the best thing about it is that it increases a player's movement speed by 35%. And also increases your energy by 500 so speed and regenerating with health are some things that are really good for buddha fruit users and the reason for this is that when you're using a buddha fruit to grind and you even take that little bit of damage you instantly want to heal it up and being able to run faster means that you can outrun your enemies and not let them hit you but with the overpowered reach of the buddha fruit you can still hit them so this thing is something that's really cool it's hockey colors well you might be thinking the hockey colors aren't that important but there's two things that are really good about them so later in the game once you get to the third C, you're gonna need some specific hockey colors to spawn in the final boss rip indra and the second thing that's really good about them is that they're really cool and they make your hockey 10 times better to look at so the way you change your hockey color is there's an npc that spawns at a bunch of different locations throughout the whole of the second C. and if you ever see him spawn he lets you buy a random hockey color from him and these cost 1500 fragments but this is only for regular colors as for legendary colors they sell for 7,500 fragments, but they look a lot better, so they're definitely worth it. The NPC that you buy it from is called the Master of Auras, and he takes 5 minutes to spawn and 20 minutes to despawn, so you have 20 whole minutes to buy your aura. And if he's not in a spawn location that you're at, then it's probably better to server hop to try and find him. But this is only for people that don't have a lot of Robux. If you have a bunch of Robux, you can just head to the cafe, and then you get this chest, and you go all the way here to the bottom. And once you do that, if you talk to this guy right here, you can literally buy all your hockey colors with robux literally any in the game but i don't think a lot of you watching just have millions of spare robux to spend on this so you should probably just stick to the other method so everybody knows that in the first seed the best fighting style to buy is water kung fu because it's the best for grinding but did you know that you can upgrade water kung fu to a thing called shark man karate and that makes it even better for grinding the reason for this is that shark man karate is the version 2 of water kung fu which means it deals so much more damage and the abilities are 10 times better and the way you get it is that you head over to the skull island and you talk to this guy here named Digrok the shark man you have to complete the quest that he gives you which involves getting a water key and finding this boss behind the island and the key has a really low percent chance of dropping so if you want to complete this quest fast you have to have double drops enabled and once you complete the quest it literally costs 2.5 million belly and 5,000 fragments to buy it so it's really expensive but trust me this is definitely worth it. and it's going to make your grinding life in the second 
efficiency so much easier. But keep in mind that you do have to have a 400 mastery on Water Kung Fu, so if you don't have double mastery, this is probably going to take you a bit of time to get. And this is also something that's really good for Buddha users, because this is definitely the best fighting style to use with the Buddha. And the reason for this is that its passive ability does not have any delay. So that once you get into the second C, you can literally upgrade your race. So the way you upgrade your race to version 2 is you head over to this huge island over here, and then behind this blue mushroom, there should be a guy called the Awakenings Expert. And if you didn't know what races are, I don't blame you. Most people that just get into the second C have no idea that this is even a thing in the game. So basically how it works is that 50% of players that join the game spawn in as human. And the other races in the game are Angel, Shark Man, Ghoul, Mink, and Cyborg. But since most of you are human and you won't be able to change your race for a while, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it if you're a human. So actually, the first quest is the same for every race, so everybody watching can follow through for this one. The way it works is once you've talked to this guy, you have to complete the quest that he gives you, and then you should be searching for three different types of flowers. And these are the spawn locations of every single one. And to get the yellow flower, you have to keep killing NPCs from here till one of them drops it. And to upgrade your race into version 3, you head over to this huge tree over here, and then there should be a secret entrance right behind the mountain. And then once you talk to this guy over here, he'll give you a quest. So all you have to do is kill three different types of bosses. And these bosses are pretty low levels for the second C, so you should be able to do it. And remember, don't leave the game once you've equipped the quest, because then you have to go re-equip the quest and kill all those three NPCs all over again. And the NPCs that you have to kill is Diamond, Jeremy, and Vegeta. And then later, once you get to the third C, you can upgrade your race into V4, and this is what makes it really awesome overpowered, but don't really need to worry about that for now. Once you get into the second C, you're gonna notice some pretty cool C events, and one of them is the Sea Beast spawning in. So the Sea Beast is a mini boss in the game, and it has a ton of health, but it gives you a lot of rewards if you end up killing it. The way to spawn a Sea Beast is just be randomly out somewhere in the waters, just driving around on your boat, and then there's a random chance that the Sea Beast spawns it. And sometimes Sea Beasts even spawn in groups of three, which is really scary because they're almost impossible to kill even for players that are max level. But sea events are not the only ways that sea beasts can get into the game. When a player earns a 10 million bounty, they can summon sea beasts that have around 20,000 HP and 35,000 if they're in the third sea. But these sea beasts don't drop anything when defeated. Sea beasts can also be spawned in by an NPC called the Tidekeeper, which is a boss on the Skull Island. And keep in mind that sea beasts are a really good way to grind money and fragments, so you want to keep a lookout for these guys and kill them whenever you get the chat. Did you know that once you get into the second sea, you can actually reset your stats without using any codes or paying Robux? So all you have to do is you have to head over to the huge bridge on the map, and around halfway on it, there should be a guy there called Plokster. And all you have to do is, oh, is pay him a mere amount of 2,500 100 fragments and then you should get one stat reset point but make sure you upgrade your stat points properly because you don't want to have to keep giving this guy 2500 every time you want to change them so everybody knows that the best grinding fruit in the game for first c players is probably the magma fruit but once you get into the second c you should have rolled the blocks with gotcha enough times to get your hands on the buddha fruit the buddha fruit is the literal best fruit in the whole game for grinding quests and it literally makes them 10 times easier and the reason for this is that the buddha's over Power range just lets you hit enemies without you being able to hit them. And once you get to the second C, this is definitely going to come in handy a ton. Keep in mind that this is literally just the base version of the Buddha. And you can also awaken it by doing raids, which makes it so much better. And also, it's a really cool fruit. I mean, look at the transformation. You're just a huge person that's glowing. Pretty cool in my opinion. And to get the Buddha fruit, you can either roll it from the blocks with gacha, or you can wait for it to be in stock. And when you buy it, it costs 1.2 million belly, but that should be pretty easy to have if you're in the second C. But keep in mind that it only has a 5% of being in stock, so it's probably going to take a bit to get it. But by using Discord servers and fruit notifiers, it should be pretty easy to know when it's in stock. And to fully awaken the Buddha fruit, you need 14,500 fragments, but you only need to awaken one ability, so that shouldn't be a problem. Did you know that you could also change your race once you get to the second C? Okay, so all you have to do is head over to the cafe and you find the guy named Norp who's just sitting on his computer. And if you pay him the small sum of 3,000 fragments he would randomly change your race and the random races that you can get from him are human angel shark and rabbit and also keep in mind that you cannot re-roll the same race that you already have so for example if you're already an angel then you can't 
really get an angel again. That would just be a huge waste of fragments. Alternatively, you can also buy the race change in the shop for a small sum of Robux. But if you don't want to waste your Robux, I definitely recommend just sticking to Norm. So fragments are something that you're going to instantly notice once you get into the second C. And this is because it's a new type of currency for players second C and above. And it's going to be used to buy a whole ton of things. And if you want to know a way to get a ton of fragments really fast, check out this other video of mine. But keep in mind that to finish the game and get to the third C, you will need a huge load of fragments. And you can also buy a bunch of other things around the map with it. One of the best ways to get fragments in the game is by doing fruit raids. You just want to equip the flame raid and just keep doing it over and over as many times as you can. Because each raid literally gives you a thousand fragments. But keep in mind that fragments are not as easy to get your hands on as normal money. So don't be surprised if you can't get your hands on a huge amount of fragments really fast. So another benefit of getting to the second C is that you unlock the ability to equip titles. And some titles just look really badass and you definitely want to get your hands on a bunch of them. You can get titles by doing various things around the game like killing bosses and even some YouTubers. And the way you change your titles is that you head over to the cafe, collect this chest, and then you go down here to the secret room. And then there should be this funny looking dog penguin person. And if you go talk to him, you should be able to see every title in the game and which ones that you can equip. And also, the better the title that you have on, the players around you know what you're made of. So you want to get your hands on the best ones possible. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a guide on every single fighting style in Blast Fruits, as well as some pretty cool tricks to use with all of them. Okay, so starting off, we have combat. That's literally what it's called. It's the first fighting style everyone gets as soon as they start the game. And once you change to a different fighting style, you cannot get this back. The combat has a total of two abilities, quick tackle and ground smash, and they're both pretty bad. So you want to change to a different fighting style as soon as possible. Okay, so now we have Dark Step, which is the cheapest fighting style in the whole of Blocks Fruits. And the place that you get this is in the Pirate Village, and it only costs 150,000 belly. And you can buy it from a guy called the Dark Step Teacher. All of the abilities on this are suited towards PvP, so if you want to destroy some players, this is definitely what you want to buy. And it has a total of four different abilities. The first one is a literal flying kick that just slams you into the ground, and you can aim exactly where you go. The second one is called Breakdance, and it's exactly what it sounds like. The third one is a Barrage, which locks your enemies in place and just spams kicks on them. And finally, Overheat is the transformation. It just sets your legs on fire and makes you look super cool and dish way more damage. And now we have Electric. This is a pretty decent fighting style overall, pretty good for grinding and pretty decent for PvP. And the place that you get this is behind Skyland. You buy it from the Mad Scientist for 500k belly, which is pretty expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it. And this has a total of three different abilities, and obviously they're all electric based. But the best ability is probably the last one, Electric Floor. What this does is just locks a player or NPC in place and just spams out a bunch of damage to them. And they can't move or dodge it, they just have to sit there and take all that damage. Okay, so now we have Water Kung Fu. It's the best fighting style for grinding that you can get access to in the first scene. And this is definitely what all new players want to save up. And the place that you get it is in Fishman Island. You buy it from the Water Kung Fu teacher located behind this wall. And it's pretty expensive. It costs 750,000 belly, but everyone watching should definitely save up for this one. And this is a really good ability because it has no delay between his third attack. It has a total of three different abilities, but most of them are kind of useless, and you mostly just want to use this for its mouse one attack. And later on, you can even upgrade it to a different fighting style, which is even more overpowered than this one. So now, moving on to the second C, we have Dragon's Breath. And Dragon's Breath is a really good fighting style for grinding, but it's still not better than Water Kung Fu. And the place that you get it is from a guy called Sabi at this arc. It costs 1.5k fragments, which in my opinion is pretty cheap. And so, this fighting style has a total of three abilities. And the first ability is called Dragon Rush, which has a 100 mastery requirement. Second one is called Dragon Flames, which has a 200 mastery requirement. And the third one is called Dragon Explosion, which has a 300 mastery requirement. And with this fighting style, you don't really want to be using your abilities. You mainly just want to use it for the passive ability because that's really good. And if you take damage alone, it's definitely better than Water Kung Fu. But what prevents it from being a better fruit for grinding is the delay that it has between its third attack. So if you notice on Water Kung Fu, it's just fluent attacks with no pauses in between. But for Dragon's Breath, there's a short delay between the third one. But overall, it's still a pretty decent fighting style. And for the price of 1.5k fragments, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so now 
we have superhuman and superhuman is pretty decent for grinding but it specializes way more in pvp and the place that you get this is on the secret cave on the snow island and it costs 3 million belly but wait till you hear the requirements so you need a 300 mastery on electric dark step water kung fu and dragon's breath and that's a total of 1200 levels of mastery so it's going to be really hard to get and superhuman has three moves the z ability is called beast alpound the x ability is called thunderclap and the c ability is called conqueror's gun so for the z ability what it does you can launch yourself in any direction and if you encounter a player or an npc it just locks them and punches them 20 times which is probably the best ability in my opinion even though you only need 110 levels of mastery to get it the other two abilities are also pretty decent but you definitely don't want to be using these for grinding because water kung fu still beats it in that category and wait till you see what you can upgrade it to later it gets way crazier okay so now we have dead step and this is our first v2 ability on the list dead step is the upgraded version of dark step and the way you get it is in the second seat at the ice castle you talk to someone called fiona the reformed and it costs 5,000 fragments and 2.5 million belly and this fighting style is really good for pvp not so good for grinding and also helps you a ton while cb's hunting but keep in mind to buy this ability on top of the fragments and belly you need a 400 mastery on dark step which is going to be pretty hard to get and dead step has a total of four different abilities and the highest level mastery that you need is 400 which is really crazy so first we have the rocket kick which is exactly what it sounds like it's just a rocket kick the wind bullet is just you basically just shooting a wind bullet the vermilion drill is your player locking the character and just repeatedly kicking them hundreds of times and last of all the final ability called maximum overheat is a transformation which basically sets your legs on fire and when you use any of the other abilities they deal way more damage and also it looks pretty sick okay so now we have shark man karate and shark man karate is the upgraded version of water kung fu and the way you get it is going to the skull island on the second sea and talking to dairock the shark man and it costs 2.5 million bellies and 5,000 fragments and you also need a 400 mastery of water kung fu to get it and this fighting style is the best fighting style for grinding in the game so if you're looking to level up as fast as possible and reach max level this is definitely the one you want to get and the reason for this is it doesn't have a delay between his third abilities you can just keep spamming the ability on npc it also has three abilities but the abilities aren't really important the only reason that this is good is because of its passive ability and the no delay for the third attack but if you want to you can still use the z ability for movement purposes if you want to get to places faster i mean that's the only thing i use it for anyway okay so now we're getting into fighting styles that can be found in the third c so first on the list is electric claw and electric claw is the upgraded version of electric and it focuses a lot on pvp and it has a good amount of stun attacks so you're going to want to use this in combos a ton and the place that you get this is talking to the previous hero in the middle of these arches on the floating turtle and once you talk to him he'll give you a quest to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds and this is pretty easy to do and once you get there you can buy it for 5,000 fragments and 3 million belly but keep in mind you also need a 400 master in electric to buy this electric claw has a total of three abilities and they're all pretty decent for pvp the z ability is another ability that just locks the character in place and just spams them with the electric claw attack the second one isn't really that good because it just knocks them randomly somewhere and they can quickly recover from it thunderclap and flash this is a really good attack and you definitely want to use these in your combo it basically just flashes you around the place and you just slam into the player dealing a buttload of damage although this one is really good for pvp wait till you see what comes later on it's gonna blow your mind okay so now we have dragon talon and dragon talon is pretty decent for pvp and also pretty good for grinding but it's not the best of both and the way you get this is actually pretty weird you need to head over to the haunted castle in the third sea and talk to the death king and then you need to keep rolling for a random surprise until you get fiery essence and once you get fiery essence you talk to uzla who's also located on the same island and once you do that you need to pay 3 million belly and 5,000 fragments and keep in mind you need a 400 mastery on dragon's breath for this and dragon's talon has a total of three different abilities and the best ability requires a 350 mastery and finally we have god human god human is the most overpowered fighting style in the whole game and will literally let you demolish players in five seconds one downside to this is that since it's really difficult to get you only see end game players using this and the way you get it is on the turtle island you head over to this tree and you talk to the ancient monk and the requirements for this are pretty crazy so follow along you need a 400 mastery on superhuman death step shark man karate electric claw dragon talon so this basically requires you to have every fighting style in the game and to have at least 400 mastery on every single one of them and on top of that you need to pay 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments and the list doesn't end there you also need these materials you need 20 fish tails 20 magma ore 10 dragon skills and 10 mystic droplets and god human has a total of three different abilities with the costliest being a 350 mastery and every single one of these abilities are completely focused towards pvp 
directly. Every ability stuns the player and doesn't let them escape and just deals a buttload of damage to them. And the abilities also look really cool and it reminds me of the Do V2. This is how you reach max mastery in a matter of seconds. And this is how to finish your quest 10 times faster. These are some of the craziest tricks that pros abuse in the third seed that you don't. So this is a trick you can use once you get to the third seed to get mastery really fast. And all you have to do is literally head over to the last island in the game. And then you want to get one of the NPCs down to literally one shot. And then you want to take out the weapon that you want to get mastery on. And then you just have to finish off that NPC with that weapon. And your weapon is going to get a huge amount of mastery for that. And if you repeat this a few times you should be able to unlock the abilities that you need just keep in mind that you don't accidentally kill the npc by accident because that wouldn't end well okay so a really good sword that you can get in the third c is the yama sword and the yama sword is a super overpowered legendary sword it's also really similar to the tushida sword and these two swords will also help you get the cursed dual katanas but keep in mind you do have to have 350 mastery on both of them the cursed dual katanas are really good sword and probably one of the best in the game for pvp in my opinion and the Cursed Dual Katana is obviously a mythical weapon, which has two moves and one is called Revolting Ravager and the other one is called Slayer of Goliath. And those sound pretty epic. So another thing that you can get in the third C, and this is something that helps you a lot with PvP against NPCs and players. I'm obviously talking about Observation V2. With Observation V2, you can see the player's level, fighting style, sword, blocks fruit, gun, combined with the normal abilities of the original Observation. It also lets you recharge your dashes faster, which is going to be a great help. It also blurs your vision a bit less, so it lets you see your screen more clearly. And also when a player is charging up their attack or using a move, it shows the player in a white glow showing that they're about to use a move. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about the Advanced Fruit Dealer. The Advanced Fruit Dealer is an NPC that spawns on the Mirage Island. The fruits that can be in stock for the Advanced Fruit Dealer are so much better. For the regular Fruit Dealer, the minimum amount of fruits that he has in stock is 3. And for the Advanced one, it's 7. And with the Advanced Fruit Dealer, you also have a way higher chance for Legendary Fruits. And with the regular Fruit Dealer, it takes 4 hours to restock, but the Advanced Fruit Dealer only takes 2. But since you need to wait for the Mirage Island to spawn in to go talk to the Advanced Fruit Dealer, it's probably better to just stick with the normal guy. This is something that all players in the third C should have and it's gonna help you a ton to get around the place. I'm obviously talking about portals. The way you unlock portals is after defeating the Rip Indra boss. And since there's a portal in every major island, it's gonna help you a ton to just go around the place, talk to NPCs, etc. In every single island except for Port Town, Great Tree, Haunted Castle, and Sea of Treats, there should be a portal in every other island. But keep in mind that Rip Indra is a really difficult boss to defeat because he's literally a level 5000 boss and you should probably get a bunch of friends to help you and keep in mind that you do need to do at least 10% of damage to him to unlock the portals because if you don't then it's kind of useless and these portals are also a really good way to help you escape pvp situations because i mean if you're fighting against someone that's super overpowered and is about to kill you you can just jump on a portal which takes you to a safe zone and they can't really kill you there Okay, so now this is something that doesn't have much practical use, but regardless, it's something that's really cool. I'm talking about Rainbow Hockey, and Rainbow Hockey just looks really cool because you're just glowing and it just makes you look like a pro player. Keep in mind that this will not boost your defense or offense, and it's purely cosmetic. And the way you get this is by completing the Rainbow Savior quest. Once you've completed the quest, you can buy it with fragments, but if you're pretty rich, you can also just go directly to the Aura guy and buy it with some Robux. To start the quest, you have to talk to an NPC called the Honored Man, who's located at the Floating Turtle Island. He's gonna tell you to kill all of these bosses, the Stone, Island Empress, Kilo Admiral, Captain Elephant, and the Beautiful Pirate. And make sure you actually equip their quests when you defeat them or else it won't count. And also keep in mind, you have to be at least level 1950 to complete this quest, because if you're underneath, then you can't enter the Beautiful Pirate's domain. But if you try hard enough, you can still glitch through using the Flash Step. Now, this is something that, in my opinion, all players in the third C should have. I'm talking about Race V4. Race V4 just upgrades and evolves your race to something that looks extremely cool and makes your character 10 times better. And the requirements for this quest are Mirror Fractals, which you get from defeating the Doe King. And obviously, you need to have any race that's in version 3. You need to already have killed Rip Indra. And you need to find the gear in Mirage Island. And you need two other friends with different races in V3. Now, this is the most overpowered fighting style 
in the whole game. I'm talking about God Human. And to buy God Human, it cost a whole 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments. This is the literal best fighting style in the whole game. But the requirements for this are really drastic. You need a 400 mastery on Superhuman, Death Step, Sharkman Karate, Electric Claw, and Dragon Talon. And you obviously need to have access to the third seat because where else are you gonna buy it? You also need these materials. You need 20 fish tails, 20 magma ore, 10 dragon scales, and 10 mystic droplets. But these aren't that hard to get compared to the mastery level requirements. And once a player has all of these, you can head over to the ancient monk who is located at the floating turtle. And then once you have all of these things, you can simply just buy it. But keep in mind, you probably only want to use this for bounty hunting because for grinding Sharkman Karate is definitely much better. Okay, so this is the electric claw fighting style. And this is a fighting style that's really good for PvP and also pretty decent for grinding. To get the electric claw, obviously you need 400 mastery on the normal electric fighting style, which you buy from this NPC on this rock outside Sky Islands. And then you head over to the Turtle Island. Then you find the previous hero NPC that's located to the Logma boss. And then you have to do his quest, which requires to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds. If you're a mink race, this should be really easy for you to do. And keep in mind, you can also do it with the portal fruit. So that's kind of a cheat. And once you're done with the quest, just pay him 3 million belly and 5,000 fragments. Then you can equip the electric claw from this NPC at any time that you want. And there is a level requirement for this quest. So if you can't do it, the NPC will just say, nah. Okay, so this is something that you definitely want to get once you got to the third seed. I'm talking about the Buddha fruit. I mean, you're supposed to get this fruit as early as possible, but in the third seed, it's absolutely necessary. And the reason for this is that the Buddha fruit is the best fruit for grinding in the whole game. And the third seed is the hardest to gain levels on since the enemies are way more powerful here. So you definitely need this fruit because when you grind with the Buddha fruit, you should be able to hit your enemies before they can hit you. So the damage that you take from grinding will be very minimal. But keep in mind that the Buddha only has a 5% chance of being installed so you're gonna want to keep an eye out for that. Did you guys know that the third sea has the least amount of islands in the whole game? And you guys have probably noticed why the islands on the third sea are humongous. If you thought the islands in the second sea were huge, just wait till you see the islands in the third sea. The island sizes are literally five times bigger. And unlike the first sea, the islands at the third sea literally have three quest givers per island. And there's way more things you can do at each island compared to the first sea. And from what the devs say, there's way more islands to come. So this could make the third sea literally humongous and the biggest sea in the whole of blocks fruits okay so this is something that's going to make your level grinding process in the third sea so much easier so since the third sea is really massive and really huge you want to keep an eye out for quests that are closer to the quest giver even if they're a lower level of quest so i'm going to be giving you guys an example from an island in the first sea so if you take the pirate village this is where the quest giver is located next to the docks and this is where the first quest is pirates and the pirates spawn really close to each other and are pretty easy to group up which leads to killing them so much much easier. But if you take the second quest, which is Brutes, they're so much further away from the quest giver and they're really split apart. And this makes killing them so difficult because you need to walk such a great distance and then to group them up, you have to walk even more. And then you have to walk all the way back to the quest giver. So even if it gives you a bit more XP, you want to go for the pirate's quest because it's much better and much closer. And you want to apply this same logic to every quest you see in the third scene. So if you see a group of NPCs that are really far away from the quest giver, it's probably best not to do that. Okay, so this is a chest farming method which is really good to do in the third sea and could lead to millions of belly. So all you have to do is make your way over here to the castle of the sea and then you walk around the place and collect every chest that you can find. Then you take a teleporter to a different island and you just repeat the process until you've cleared out every single island. And then once you've done this, just make your way back and the chest should have respawned in the initial island and you just keep repeating this process until you become Blocks Fruit's first billionaire. Okay, so this is a place on the third sea that's literally going to be a golden zone for every player. I'm talking about the castle of the sea. Over here, you have everything that you'll ever need. You could equip any combat style in the game here. You can find the aura editor. You can watch flashbacks of what happened with the second sea. And you can do two different types of raids, the advanced ones and the normal ones. You literally have no reason to leave this place. And this is where end game players hang out. Players that have finished the game and have not much else to do. So if you're a pretty low level player and you want a fruit, you could just come here on a public server and just beg for it. And the players might drop 
top of tier since they're really overpowered. Okay, so one thing you're gonna notice once you get into the third C is the potential to awaken legendary fruits. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when you talk to the mysterious scientist, huh? there should be a section that says lock. And this is where the advanced raids come in. Once you finish a quest on the third C, you unlock the advanced raids. You can buy them for either 1,000 fragments or trading in a physical fruit that's worth over 1 million belly. And the fruits you can awaken with this is Quake, Phoenix, and Doe. And these fruits are all really cool fruits, especially the Doe fruit. It's probably one of the most popular fruits in the game. Keep in mind that the advanced raids are obviously way harder than the regular raids. You probably want to get some help from your friends because I don't think a lot of people can finish these raids by themselves. And now this is a pretty decent way to get your hands on some really epic fruits. At the Castle of the Sea, every one hour and 15 minutes, a message should appear on your screen saying pirates have been spotted approaching the castle. And around 30 seconds later, a bunch of pirates will start attacking the castle. And this is called a pirate raid. There's gonna be a huge amount of pirates that start attacking, and once you kill every single one of them, the person that kills the last pirate will be awarded a random fruit. And players that defeat at least one pirate will be awarded a hundred fragments. But if you fail to defeat all of the pirates in time, then the pirates will just stop raiding, and you have to wait another hour and 15 minutes for the raid to start again. One really important and epic thing that you can do once you get into the third sea is awaken your dough fruit, and everybody knows that the dough fruit is literally the best fruit in the whole game. Cost 2.8 million belly to buy, or 2,400 robux. And the chances of dough being in stock is only 1.4%. And the way you unlock this dough fruit is by defeating the dough king in the mirror world and then using the red key to unlock the door to the cake scientist. And once you unlock the cake scientist, you can do your dough raid. But keep in mind that to fully awaken this fruit, you literally need 18,500 fragments, and that's gonna be really hard to get your hands on. And all the moves of the awakened dough fruit all sound really epic. And the reason that the dough fruit is considered one of the best fruits in the game is because of its abilities for PvP. It has a lot of stun abilities, and when the user is caught in them, you literally can't even move. You're just forced to sit there and watch yourself die. And when the dough fruit is combined with other fighting styles and different types of hockey, it just gives really overpowered. And if you're bounty hunting, this is definitely a fruit you want to keep your eye on. Everyone knows that the third C is actually the last C in block fruits. So once you're completely done with the third C and you've reached max level, there isn't really much to do, except for bounty hunting. Bounty hunting is something that keeps the game still fun for max level players, because anyone at any level can do this, and once you've reached max, there isn't much else to do but this. Players normally complete the game with the Buddha fruit equipped, but if you want to start bounty hunting, then you should probably get a PvP fruit. I'd recommend the Leopard fruit or the Awakened Doe, because those are really good in my opinion. And for your combat style, you also want to switch that from Sharkman Karate to God Human, because God Human is really good at PvP. And then all you have to do is click on someone's poster and just hunt them down. And keep in mind that this is also a pretty good way to give you a lot of money, so when the game finally updates, you can go buy everything that's available in the new update. This is a super secret room in Blocks Fruits, and this is how you glitch underneath the map. These are 18 of the craziest Blocks Fruit secrets that you must know. Actually, a secret fruit in Blocks Fruits that not many people have, and this fruit is called the Meme Fruit, and this is exactly what it looks like. It's literally just a traffic cone. And the reason a lot of people don't have this is because it's only for the admins and mods, and there's no way that a regular player can get it unless you're friends with the admins. And this fruit literally only has one move, which can deal extreme damage to your allies but does no damage to non-allied players, and hence the reason it's called the meme fruit. And not a lot else is known about this fruit, like I said it only has one ability, and this is a photo of it in use. Obviously a really good thing about this fruit is it's just a great way to annoy people, but remember, you're not getting it unless you're an admin. Okay, so this one is a secret room on the Blast Fruits map, so what you have to do to find it is make your way over to the second seat, and then you gotta come to the cafe, and then you have to go down this secret hole where you find the awakenings expert, and right behind him, if you use your flash step, you should be able to glitch through the wall and get into this secret room. Inside the room, you will find a variety of toad and frog images, and a briefcase full of cash. Bruh. But that's now destroyed. You'll also find a green bed, and this place is King Toad's house. And it's a pretty secret thing that the devs decided to add to the game to see if anyone could ever find it. But there's a secret within the secret. If you angle your camera right, you can actually see what's written on this board over here. So the sign says King Toad's house, and then in brackets it says also known as 
Wenlock Toad. Who is King Toad or Wenlock Toad? I guess we'll never know. Okay, so next up on the list is another secret room, but this is something that not a lot of you might know. So when you're on the first seat, make your way over to Middletown and then follow exactly where I walk. And everyone knows that you can't actually walk into houses on Blocks Fruits, but there is a secret house that you can walk into. And this house right here, you can actually walk into it. And once you get inside, you're gonna find a bunch of random things, a lot of posters on the wall, and you also have the aura editor. Hello there. And I didn't even know the aura editor was in the first seat. Turns out he was in the secret spot the whole time. Then you have a different guy, and this guy just says a bunch of random stuff you try and talk to. Like, he literally doesn't make any sense. And this is a pretty decent secret, because I didn't know the aura editor was in the first seat. But the other guy, uh, I'm not sure about him. Okay, so next up is a secret that I'm pretty sure none of you know about. So there's a secret love letter that you can find in Blocks Fruits, and it can be found in three different locations across the first seat. And this love letter is actually a way to earn the Dark Blade version 2. So the first location for the love letter is behind this exact wall on the Frozen Village. And the second location is in Skylands. It can be found inside a house behind the door marked in the image. The door has to be destroyed, and in all of these locations, you need the Dark Blade to access it. Obviously, because it's the Dark Blade quest. And the third location is at Marine Fortress behind this wall. And since I'm guessing a lot of you in the game don't have the Dark Blade equipped, I'll show you what the love letter says when you click on it. Hmm, that's an interesting message. Okay, so this is a secret that I'm guessing a lot of you might already know. But nevertheless, did you know that there's a secret Brazil cube and it can be found inside of Don Swan's mansion, right beside his bed and near the Thailand wall. And the reason that this cube and ball exists is to show the Blocks Fruits dev support to these countries. Another pretty cool thing about it is that the Brazil cube can also be spawned by an admin. And if a player touches the cube that's spawned by an admin, they just get a free Dark Blade. And that's pretty cool because the Dark Blade is one of the best swords in Blocks fruits. But the chances of you running into an admin are a little too close to zero. Okay, so now we have an under the map glitch, and you might be wondering, wait, how do you get underneath the map in Blocks fruits? Well, for this particular glitch, you need to have access to the third seat, and you make your way over to this island with this humongous tree. And then if you go to this exact spot on the map, you should be able to just kind of fall into the mountain. But it's not really a mountain underneath, it's underneath the map. And there's not much to do here, obviously, but I don't think it's something that devs want wanted you to find. And did I mention that it also looks pretty cool down here? Okay, so next up is the triple dark blade. And this sword is exactly what it sounds like. It's literally the dark blade, but three times more powerful. And this is probably the best sword in the whole of Blocks Fruits. And a lot of you might be wondering, how do I get my hands on this? Well, sorry to break it to you guys, but only admins have access to this sword. Or if you're really close friends with an admin, you could also maybe get the sword. But for a normal player, this is definitely not something you're going to be getting. And when a user uses this sword, they're basically wielding three dark blades and it has the exact same skills as the original dark blade with slight modifications for example the slash ability is the exact same as the normal one but instead of one slash it sends out three huge slashes but the x ability is about the same as the normal sword and also another thing don't beg admins for the sword they're not going to give it to you a lot of you might be wondering when was this sword added to the game it was added around update 9 or 10 but it wasn't really revealed because i'm pretty sure the admins wanted to keep this as a secret from the community but some people accidentally might have leaked it to the community. A secret that is not talked about a lot in the community. It's about the Awakened versus Awakened Buddha fruit. Everyone knows that once you awaken your Buddha, you just get bigger and look a lot cooler. And the range you can hit people also increases by a little bit. But there's actually a little secret that not a lot of you guys know. So when you're in the unawakened version of the Buddha and you use your sky jump ability, you jump about as high as a normal player would, which kind of doesn't make sense because if you're as big as a Buddha, you should jump as much as a Buddha would. But that problem problem gets fixed once you awaken your Buddha. Your jumps are a lot higher, and they're way bigger than the default jumps. Literally, look at this. Here's a comparison with just a normal player jumping, and this is the comparison with an awakened Buddha jumping. It's a lot better, and you can reach a lot higher places. But sadly, this does not work for the dashes, but I wish it did. Devs, please add it to the game. So this is something about the control fruit. Everybody knows that the control fruit obviously lets you move around a lot of items in the game, including houses and trees and rocks and a bunch of other stuff. But have you ever wondered what the biggest thing you could move with the control fruit was? Well, let's start small at boats. Everyone knows that you can move boats, and if you also get on the boat and launch it, you can do this pretty cool glitch where you launch yourself across the map. But let's move on a bit. Can you move this bridge on the second seat? Well, you actually can, and that's really cool, but I think we can go a little bit bigger. If you make your way over to where the diamond boss spawns, and look at this huge tree right here. Well, that's the biggest thing that you can move with the control fruit, and I honestly was not expecting this. 
because this just looks way too big to be moved like. I mean, this tree is literally the size of some first sea islands, which is pretty crazy to me. So if you're ever fighting someone with the control fruit near this area, make sure you launch this tree at them. It could do a lot of damage. Okay, so this trick also doesn't have much practical use, but it's something pretty cool that I've noticed. So everybody knows that the way your hockey evolves is from your hands to your arms to your chest and so on. But did you know that if you equip the dark step fighting style, it actually starts from your legs? And this kind of makes sense because when you fight with dark step, you don't really use your hands, do you? You use your legs. In my opinion, this just looks pretty cool. I mean, have you ever seen a Roblox character that only has the hockey on the bottom half of their body? It just looks kind of weird in my opinion. Okay, so this secret is actually an NPC. If you make your way over to the first sea and head over to Skylands, did you know that there's this secret NPC called Yoshi that sells you an accessory? And a lot of you might not have known this because a lot of people, when they originally get to Skylands, you don't have the sky jump ability, so you can't really jump up here to see the NPC, and you have no way of knowing that it's there. And the accessory that this NPC sells you is the Tomoe Ring, and this accessory gives you 10% more blocks for damage, and this is something that's really decent for first sea players. And the requirement for this is that you need to have at least 200 stat points put into your melee, because if you don't, then you won't be able to buy it. And it also costs 500,000 belly, so you gotta be a stacked first sea player if you're gonna be buying this. Okay, so everybody knows about the factory raid on the second sea, which literally lets you get one free fruit. And everyone also knows that you cannot get inside the factory when the raid is not happening. But what if I told you there was a way to get inside and get a head start before all the other players in the lobby? Well, all you have to do is you have to walk over to this exact location and angle your camera properly. And then you simply have to use the flash step glitch and boom, you're inside. And now hopefully you can outpace the other 9 billion people that show up for the factory raid. Well, good luck with that. Okay, so now we got another NPC. And this one is definitely something that I don't think a lot of you know. So in the first sea on the desert island, there's this little chest over here. Did you know that if you collect the chest, you can actually open up a secret tunnel and you make your way down the tunnel and you just keep walking for a little bit. You should get to this NPC called Hassan. And Hassan sells you the swordsman hat and gives you a 10% sword boost. So you do 10% more damage with every sword that you have. And the requirements for this are flash step, aura, and air jump. And you need at least 300 stat points put on your sword. And then finally, you have to pay him 150,000 belly. But in my opinion, this is a really good starter accessory. And if you're in the first year, you should definitely get your hands on this one. Okay, so this secret doesn't have much practical use. It's a secret code that a lot of you might not know. If you walk over to this exact house at Skylands, and at first look, it might look like there's nothing inside. But if you tilt your camera and look at the ceiling, you'll see a bunch of text that just says food 10. And if you enter this as a code on blocks roots, you get a solid one belly. And that's pretty much it. But it's still a pretty cool easter egg in my opinion. But like I said before, not that much practical use. Okay, so we have another NPC and this one is also on the first seat. If you head over to the magma island and you go to this exact spot here, did you know you could actually kind of walk into the volcano? And once you go in there, there should be an NPC called the living skeleton. And this living skeleton sells to you a sword for 750,000 belly. And this sword is called the soul cane. And in my opinion, it's really good for grinding and PVP. And also looks pretty cool. Like it's literally a sword combined with a cane. This sword has a total of two abilities and has really high combo potential. But you need really good aim to use it. But overall, I think it's a really good sword that all first C players should get their hands on. This one is a tiny secret. Did you know that all fruits and blocks fruits actually have the properties of their fruit? So if you have the magma fruit equipped it, then you can literally walk on lava. If you have the ice fruit equipped it, then you can walk over water which turns into ice. And if you have the rubber fruit equipped it, you take no damage from all lightning based attacks. This includes attacks like the electric fighting style and the rumble fruit, as well as some swords that use electricity. Overall, I think this is pretty cool and it's something that the devs definitely put a lot of time and effort into to make the game realistic and fun to play. An Opera Skylands that not a lot of people know about. It's also something that I mentioned a decent amount in my previous videos, but nevertheless, it's still a pretty cool secret. So if you make your way over to Opera Sky Islands and you walk through this exact part of the temple, then you have to use an ability to destroy this wall. And once you get up here, you should find a total of eight different chests. And these chests all give you a decent amount of money. And if you keep server hopping the chest, it's a really good way to grind money, especially if you're in the first sea. And make sure you also buy double money because it literally gives you double the money from the chests. On the Mirage Island, there's actually a secret temple. And the way you get access to it is you head over to inside the waterfall on the Hydra Island. And then you have to use a physical ability to completely decimate the door. And this is kind of similar to the gate to get to Upper Sky Islands. And once you're inside, you'll encounter five ghosts who are level 1,500. 
and they'll use flash tip to teleport you, although they're really low health. And once you enter, you can attempt to pull the Yama sword, and you don't need to defeat the ghost if you have an elemental fruit, because they're affected by its immunity. And this is also the starting point to obtain the sword Tushina, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Nevertheless, it's a pretty cool secret room that I did not know existed. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to maximize your observation hockey in literally one day, and how to get the exact race you want without spending a single dollar. These are some of the craziest blocks fruits tricks that pros abuse that you don't. So everybody knows that observation hockey is one of the most useful things in the whole game, but, but it is one of the hardest things to level up. But I'm gonna be showing you guys a little trick to help you get your observation hockey to max in no time. So all you have to do is hop over to any NPC that activates your observation hockey, but preferably close to where you have your spawn point set. And what you do is you just let them hit you with your observation on. And once you've used up all your dodges, all you have to do is simply server hop. And the reason you want to server hop instead of waiting for your dodges to restore is because server hopping literally only takes like 10 seconds and waiting for your dodges to restore takes a lot more. And once you've server hopped, you just repeat the process over and over until you get the max amount of dodges possible. But keep in mind, don't forget to upgrade your observation hockey to V2 because it's a lot better than V1. And this trick is for you Buddha users out there. So what this trick lets you do is make a giant sword. And some of you might be thinking, wait, what? You make a giant sword in blocks for well, all you have to do is transform into the Buddha. And then, when you hold your sword, it should show you a way bigger wow. version of the sword. The first thing you want to do is unequip your sword and go into the Buddha fruit. And once you have the Buddha fruit equipped, it, all you have to do is undo your transformation right as you switch to your sword. And what this lets you do is basically be in the untransformed version of the Buddha, but you still keep the long range that you get. Did I also mention that it looks really cool, especially with the triple swords? Overall, it's just a pretty funny trick that you can use to grind without being transformed or just to troll your friend. Okay, so this trick is for those of you that are still in the first year and are looking to grind some bounty really fast. So all you have to do is head over to Upper Sky Islands, but make sure that you actually hit the level requirement and Upper Sky Islands is a place that you completely cleared. And once you're here, you'll notice that there are two boss spawn locations. One is right next to the teleporter and the other one's on the second island. And everybody knows that bosses are the NPCs that hire your bounty. So all you have to do is kill the first boss over here and then walk over to the second guy and then kill him. And then all you have to do is simply server hop and just keep repeating this method over and over until you reach max bounty. And this is one of the few places in the whole of Blocks Fruits where there are two bosses located in the same place. So make sure you abuse it while it's still here. So everybody knows about the rubber fruit in Blocks Fruits. It's a legendary fruit and overall a pretty decent and cool fruit. But did you know these two secret things about the rubber fruit literally make the fruit really overpowered. So since it's a rubber fruit, it's completely immune to electric attacks and the rumble fruit. And the reason for this is that in real life, rubber does not conduct electricity. So the rubber fruit is completely immune to people that use the rumble fruit and electric fighting styles, such as the electric and the electric claw. And since electric claw is one of the best fighting styles in the game, it's gonna make it really hard for players with that fighting style to fight against rubber users. And that's not the only thing, it's also completely immune to gun attacks. Can you imagine a complete category of weapons and blocks which cannot do damage to rubber users? That makes the rubber fruit one of the most overpowered fruits in the game, especially if you're grinding against users that use a gun. Or if you know that somebody's a gun main and you want to take them on in PvP, you should definitely equip the rubber fruit. And did I also mention how cool the fruit looks when you transform? It's really crazy. So the first thing everybody wants to do once they've bought their hockey is obviously level it up. And if you want to hit two birds with one stone, you should be grinding out raids. And the reason for this is that there's a ton of enemies in every single raid. And when you increase the difficulty, it gets even harder. And depending on your level, I recommend you guys keep doing raids over and over. Because not only do you get the benefits of the raids like fragments, you also continuously keep leveling up your hockey. And this is really good because you're basically doing two things at once. I mean, you could also grind quests, but you can't really awaken fruits by grinding quests, can you? And the fragments are also a pretty good benefit to this. Okay, so now I'm gonna be talking about the most overpowered sword in the whole of Blocks Fruits. I'm talking about the Saber V2. And the way you get that is by doing the jungle puzzle in the first C. And this is pretty easy and anybody with the level requirement can get it done really fast. But to upgrade it to version 2, you need to get a 1 million bounty. And you must kill another player with around the same level or higher that has a million or more 
than a million bounty. There are no other requirements to upgrade it to version 2, making it something that players can get pretty easily. And once your saber evolves, you'll get a message saying something weird has occurred to your saber. And then once you check it, it should be upgraded to version 2. And the version 2 of the saber is the most overpowered sword in the game because of its potential for PvP. It literally does the most damage out of every sword in the game. It has two abilities. The first one is called Deadly Rush, and this one has a 50 mastery requirement. And the X ability is called Thripple Slash, and this has a 125 mastery requirement. And a really good thing about this sword is that you literally only need a 125 mastery requirement for this, making it a lot better than most fruits in the game. Okay, so this trick is for players that are either really low level or completely new to Bloss Fruits. And this trick is gonna let you get whatever race that you want. So everybody knows that on joining the game, there are four different races that you can get. Human, Angel, Mink, and Shark. And every player has a 50% chance of spawning in as a human. But if you want to get one of the other three, all you have to do is keep making new Roblox accounts until you get the exact race that you want. And since Roblox accounts are completely free to create and you don't even need an email, it should be pretty easy. But keep in mind, you can change your race later on. So for some of you, it might not be worth to create a completely new Roblox account just to get the race that you want on Bloss Fruit. Everybody knows that Sea Beast Hunting is one of the best ways to farm money in this game. I know a lot of you are wondering, how do you actually kill Sea Beast really easily? Because for 90% of players, it's really hard to be able to solo Sea Beast, and it gets even worse if it's rumbling waters. So the best loadout to have for when you're fighting Sea Beast is the Shark Race and Magma V2. And the reason for this is that the Magma V2's abilities are just really overpowered and specialized for Sea Beast hunting. And the Shark Race basically just lets you move around in water way faster. And did I also mention that you can literally swim in water even if you have a devil fruit equipped in, which is really cool. When you use any of the Magma V2 abilities, it leaves behind this huge blob. And what this does is it does damage over time. So if the CB stays in the same place, it keeps taking damage from the magma remains left by your attack. And on top of that, you can spam even more attacks, dealing even more damage until the sea beast is finally killed. So this next trick is something that I've kind of shown before. Everybody knows that the way to AFK grind hockey is to equip the low gear fruit and stand on the spawn point of a user that does not have hockey and then equip the really bad sword and just pummel them till they die over and over again what if you don't have a low gear fruit for example buddha users out there that are still trying to finish the game you definitely don't want to switch from the buddha fruit to something else all you have to do is do the exact same thing but you go to the starter island on the first sea and then when you stand on the spawn point of an enemy they won't push you away and they barely do any damage so you can regenerate it back in no time and then all you have to do is equip the bad sword and do the trick exactly like normal and it should work exactly the same but this version is kind of worse because you kill the enemies a lot faster i mean they are literally enemies from the first island so the low gear farming method is definitely better so everybody knows that if you buy the faster boats game pass you get boats that go a lot faster and the enforcer boat literally the fastest boat in the game but what if I told you there was a way to use these boats without buying the game pass? Well, all you need is a friend that actually does have the game pass, and you ask him to spawn in the boat for you. And once he does that, you can kind of just hijack it and drive wherever you want. But you also might be wondering, if you're someone with the game pass and you're trying to spawn in the boat for your friend, and they just steal it and run away, what would you do? Well, all you have to do is simply spawn in a new boat, and basically what this does is despawn the boat that your friend is on, so your friend just drowns. So remember, when you ask your friend if you can use their boat, make sure you don't make them angry, cause then they can just drown you. And now this trick is for players that are more newer to the game. Basically, when everybody starts playing the game and you complete your quest, you just start fighting enemies one by one. But here's a trick to make your grinding much faster. All you have to do is equip the gun because guns are kind of useless and you shoot every enemy that you see. And what this does is it aggroes your enemy, which makes them walk towards you. And then all you have to do is group them all up. And once they're in a group, you use a bunch of splash damage abilities. I recommend this ability from Sharkman Karate. It's really good for grouping up enemies and killing them. And when they all respawn, you can do the exact same thing over and over again until you're completely finished with your quest. Okay, so this next trick is about a fighting style, and I'm talking about Electric Claw. Everybody knows that Electric Claw is one of the best fighting styles in the whole of Blocks Fruit. And this is because it's kind of a hybrid fighting style. You can use it for grinding as well as PvP, and it's pretty decent at both of them. But keep in mind that this is the 
the version 2 of electric so if you want to upgrade from electric to electric claw you have to do this quest and the quest you have to do is located on the turtle island in the third scene and you come over here and talk to this guy named previous hero and he's going to give you a quest to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds and many of you will find it kind of difficult to just dash over to the mansion because it's a bit hard to do but there's actually a pretty cool trick to this all you have to do is equip the portal fruit or the light fruit and just simply teleport or just fly over there in two seconds and this makes completing the quest to get the fighting style 10 times easier because you don't even have to walk you can just zip there in two seconds but keep in mind you do have to pay it 3 million belly and 5,000 fragments so just make sure you have that ready okay so this trick is gonna help you a ton if you're a second c player instead of setting your spawn point where you actually spawn in in the second c you should set your spawn point at the half hot and half cold island and the reason for this is that this place is near everything a big thing about the second c is doing raids and since your spawn point is set right next to the raid place it should make doing your raids a lot easier because you don't need to walk a huge distance just to do some raids unless you have the portal fruit obviously because then you can just teleport over okay, so this accessory is something that every player in the game should use i'm talking about the dark wow. coat accessory this accessory is a mythical accessory and the way you get it is by defeating the dark beard boss but keep in mind that it only has a two percent chance of dropping and the way you spawn in the dark beard boss is by placing the fist of dark at the dark arena in the second seat and the things this code gives you is plus 600 energy plus 600 health and a plus 15 percent damage in your blocks fruit and if you take some really overpowered fruits like the doe and leopard it just makes them so much better and also on a side note this does look really cool it's one of the best looking accessories in the whole game so everybody knows that bounty and honor is a pretty important thing in blocks fruits but i'm gonna be telling you guys some things that you might have not known about them do you know that when you reach 2.5 million bounty you can no longer level up your bounty from bosses or npcs and the only way to level up after that is by hunting down players the players you go after have to be a similar level to you because it's kind of unfair if a max level player is picking on a level 200 player players with a 5 to 15 million bounty when they join a game it displays a special message to all the members in the server and the same goes with the even cooler message for players that have a 15 million to 30 million bounty and to prevent people from bounty farming you can only kill the same player three times to change your bounty every 72 hours and here's the chart of the overall damage and defense boost as you can see players that have a 20 million to 30 million bounty get a 35 percent defense boost and a 22 percent damage boost which is really overpowered and once you reach 10 million bounty you can literally summon cbs which is really cool and did i mention you can also earn a buttload of titles overall the bounty system is really cool and completely fits blocks fruit.